Okay, so dear Dhamma practitioners, this is our ongoing meditation session. And be comfortable yourself and relax your body. And keep your back straight, neck head straight in one line and your right palm on your left. So gently close your eyes and bring your attention to this bell sound. And while you're focusing to the sound, mentally relax your body, relax your mind. And relax your breathing with your thoughts. So do nothing extra. Just follow the sound please. Namo tasa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasa. Namo tasa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasa. Namo tasa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasa. Homage to the Blessed one, the exalted one, the fully enlightened one. So, dear Dhamma practitioners, in this ongoing meditation sessions, we mainly try to share some basic information with you for yourself to develop a very clear spiritual foundation. So when we mention by spiritual foundation, it doesn't mean it's separate from your conventional life. Your conventional success itself can uplift you to the spiritual development. So there is no separation. It's kind of like you watching hands. One hand, your conventional life. Other hand, your spiritual life. So when you have wash your hands, you have to use to your both hands together. So like that, your conventional success. So then when it comes to practice, we have to remember that practice means in, in the very beginning, in this very conventional life, we start to maintain it. So when we maintain that we have to be kind of like a discipline in certain way. We have to develop some kind of discipline. Because when you develop the discipline, it helps you to gain the wisdom. Because mind starts to purify. In a certain level, you develop some kind of confidence, clarity in you. Because in day-to-day -day life, Look why we become worried, sad, unhappy. It's because of our own unnecessary actions. So then being disciplined mean in certain way, you start to drop, you detach all unnecessary actions. So whatever becomes barriers to your own journey, you withdraw from that. So then you are the one who gain, gain the freedom, mental satisfaction. You are the one who gain some space, space inside you. So otherwise, when we interfere with a lot of most of unnecessary actions, look what happened end of the day. End of the day, we become so busy. Our mind is uh, kind of like uh, a mess because of interfering to many things. And then by the time, you gain nothing. So, then always remember, find out whatever the major things as major, minor things as minor. And when you interfere with that, know it, knowingly interfere. So that is a one kind of wisdom you gain in, in this very conventional life. What to do or what not to do? What to say or what not to say? So this is a... You, you, you have to develop 
your awareness regarding you, yourself and your environment and regarding other people. So in that way, you develop some kind of clarity inside you and you recognize and according to the, that necessary course and conditions and according to the environment, according to the situations, things can be changed. So then another wisdom you gain. And then it helps you to not to depend on your preconditioned mind, not to depend on your imagination, not to depend on your hopes, not to depend on your wish, not to depend on your future desires. Even though we have that, we of course we have this all. But you have to remember when we come to the moment, it's not going to be there. It all depends according to the very moment of your awareness. So that is very important. Sometimes people get attached to this emptiness. When, the, the, when people get attached to impermanent, impermanence or the emptiness, what happens? Oh, whatever it happened, it's it okay. No, your awareness needs to be sharp and clear. And according to the necessary thing, sometimes you withdraw from certain thing and sometimes you have to take the necessary actions in that very moment dep without depending from your own past experience or becoming biased to your wisdom or the knowledge. That's why there is a, that the ancient story that there were two brothers and fly to the moon, uh, the, the sun. They saw there's a sun and they keep flying. And it looked like beautiful. And then when, when they start to fly and they put the artificial feathers to them, huge feathers, and then they keep flying. And when they come closer, closer, close to the, the sun, they got the heat. So then one brother told, hey, we can't go there. It looked like we're going to burn. So then another one told, no, 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 let me, let me go. Let me go. We already, you know, came so far. So let me go. And by the time what happened, he burned. So sometimes in our life, the same. And we think, oh, everything will happen the way we want or the way we, we think. No, this outside world around us, everything depends on according to the necessary course and condition in that environment. There is nothing going to happen according to our wish. It is very hard to understand that. It is very painful to recognize that. But still, that is the truth. So then nothing wrong that you have hopes. Nothing wrong you have wish, but you have to remember. Sometimes things happen not according to the way you want. So once you know that, then how do things happen? So things happen according to whatever the course and condition. So keep it in that mind. So then in that way, you always have the awareness. So bringing this awareness to yourself, because you, you always engage with the life. So having this awareness is uh, another wisdom that you gain. So then meditation means one way you're purifying your perception. Why? Because most of the time, whatever we see according to our eye, ear, nose, tongue, body, mind, whatever we gain, it, it, it deeply have a connection with the hopes. So, 
because of your hopes because of your want because of your wish because of your desire and sometimes whatever the perception that you perceive you can't see very clearly you see it is there but it is not there you can see it is happening but it is not happening you can hear it but it is not what you hear? How is it possible? Because mostly we, we focus to the outside, but we don't see the mechanism. Even though things that happen coming from outside, when it comes to inside, it filtered from our own mind in that very moment. So that's why if your filter depend on the past experience or some kind of that picks knowledge or you, if you are biased to culture, tradition, believing system, your religion or the school or whatever or the books or the lectures or the gurus, the monks, the anything. If you become a bias then whatever you hear, when it comes to you, it transforms to something. So then re refining perception is uh, another way that you develop this meditation. How you do that? So just imagine, when you observe inhalation, exhalation, in the very surface level, that what you experience as inhalation, exhalation. When you keep observe a little bit, so that sensation is your, the perception, and through that perception you recognize inhalation, of course, and inhale, in, inhale and exhale. So, but if you keep observe little by little, little by, and you giving attention and you focus to that, you, when the awareness becomes sharper, what happens? that what you experience as inhalation, you are capable to go a little bit more deeper and see there is a deeper process happening there. Sometimes it becomes longer, shorter, heavy, soft, warm, cold. So each and every inhalation, exhalation has a different character. See, now... Your, your perception become clear. And then what you see, you suddenly not going to hold it because you are capable to withdraw from the experience and observe it. So then hearing, whatever you hear in the same, you're not going to, to hold or judge it with your past experience. While you're hearing, you withdraw from that and observe it. And then you may recognize behind that words there is a more deeper message. And even when you see something and nowadays we can animate things, we can create things. So then whatever you see sometimes, it is not there. But the thing is, if your perception become clear, when your mind become clear, when the awareness become clear, deeply that if your filtering system become stronger, so whatever that appear to you, you are capable to get into the truth. You see it there. And the smell the same. Smell is a kind of like a, it, it, it has a deeper, strong way to communicate. Only thing is we are not aware. You see, sometimes we can't see, we can't hear, but the smell. It, so then, but the thing is sometimes we misunderstand. Mis, mis, misinterpreted interpreted that. 
So then by the time what happens? And out of that our misunderstanding, we, we develop thoughts and then it go wrong way. So then awareness is a method to refine. So practicing meditation means rather than go with the, the moment of experience do, that the performing our reactions, we withdraw from the reaction and keep observed. Not easy because our whole system addicted to interfere and react, react, react. But now you withdraw from it. And with the tongue also the same. Taste. Whatever that uh, sometimes we perceive if you are not aware about it you are capable to eat any poison thinking it is can it, it is kind of like a very very tasty so that that is the so then it is nothing to do with this outside world it is our our own understanding sensation the same thoughts the same so whatever we keep thinking, 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 thinking and ourselves can take us to different world. We're living in a kind of like a different world then. Our mind can make us zombie. Our mind can take, make us crazy. Our mind can also take us to liberation, Nibbana. It all depends on when you use the thoughts, when the thoughts happen, where are your awareness? Are you aware when you see something, when you hear something, smell, taste, feel, think, are you aware about it? So start with that awareness. Bring the attention. Focus to it. Put some energy on it. Work little by little, little by little. Get into the depth of the moment of experience. So in that way, you recognize, even though it has no permanent solid structure, it, it happens according to the necessary course and conditions around us. So then it will help you to break down that our ignorance. Because that is where the, the vipassana is very important because the vipassana knowledge give you a, the deeper understanding about you and around you. And sometimes we think Oh, tranquility state. Focus to one thing. And do only one at one time. You, but you can't do that way like that. Generally, we, we say like that. Just imagine this, this to happen, this Zoom meeting like this, this class like this. We have to focus to the lesson, but at the same time, look at your environment. There, there are many things help you at the same time to bring this experience. So then larger scale that you have to remember that whatever the moment of experience come out of the, the contribution of many things. So that will help you to detach from something. Of course, you can focus to one thing. Just imagine when you when you cooking something, and if you have the have a child, or maybe there is something. If you focus to something, and if you just only stay with that one, without any, having any uh, that understanding about the around you, what will happen? 
So then focus to one thing is very necessary, but at the same time, you have to remember from your background that one thing depend on many things. In that way, you okay. So in that way, you are capable to recognize how things come to be a, a, a how things come to be as they are according to cause and effect. So deeply that is another wisdom that you gain that there is nothing exists independently, there is nothing exists separately, there is nothing permanent. But still, this everything happens, the things are there, but it depends on something. And once you have this, you gain another wisdom. What is that? You are capable to experience something without getting attached to that. That is another thing. But with ourselves, with our eye, ear, nose, tongue, body, mind, always when we experience, we develop a kind of like an idea inside us. This is me. I experience that. But the thing is, in this world, there is no separate independent experiencer. So once you know that, you are also part of the experience. You are capable to experience it, but you're not going to hold it. So then you can, you can use that wisdom in day-to-day -day life. So whatever it is there, whatever your life. So you don't need to escape from that. Experience it. But experience it and see, can you stay without having attachment to that? So that is a skill. So to develop that skill, you need a certain wisdom. You have to know how it happens. So that is why it brings this through this practice. It brings that ability. So in that way, you have no any fear regarding life. So that itself uplifts you to perform yourself to the highest. And that is a kind of like a deeply you gain freedom. You gain liberation from you. Because otherwise, we always very limited to our own imagination, our own hopes. But Sometimes you even you can't understand, you can't imagine, you can't believe that what you see as you are not the real you. There is a more different person. But the problem is this. Why it happened to us like this way? Because from childhood, we used to see the mirror every morning. We see the mirror and then we, 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 we look at ourselves and we believe. We become very limited to that mirror, the person that we see through the mirror. So that becomes our mental imagination. And it makes you limited and you live with that person. And mirror is important, but remember always when you look at the mirror, there is more bigger, there is more higher, there is more advanced, there is more skillful person beyond that picture. Some, sometimes people can't think like that because that much we stuck in our, our own mind. We, we condition ourselves. 
Why? Because long, long, long time we keep doing this. That's why. We keep repeating we, we again and again and again and we believe, we think like that. way. So now it's there like that. But always remember that if you are capable to to have that freedom inside you, if you are capable with your eye, ear, nose, tongue, body, mind to experience something without getting attached to that, knowingly that whatever you experience happens according to the necessary course and conditions in that very moment, you, you start to shift to a different frequency and you start to understand the life beyond this moment of that you you believing so that shift is very necessary even in the conventional life because otherwise we are just used to maintain everything we are just maintaining living means we are maintaining maintain maintain you can maintain the material things. You, you have to maintain the, this physical things. But remember the life you have to grow. So that growth need to go towards the wisdom. That growth should go towards the liberation or the freedom. So then that is where you have to remember. Where are you heading? Are you heading towards the prison? Are you heading towards the, the harbor? Are you heading towards the freedom or are you heading towards the ocean? So it is your choice. You, this is your life. So then the very first thing that you have to remember, the very first barrier, our own thoughts. Because even though you see, you hear, you smell, of course, that, that's true. But there are a lot of things beyond that. So how you can gain that? You start to purify your mind and start to purify your perception. Again and again, again and again, again and again. So for that, you have to slow down and learn to wait and you have to put the energy. You have to be patient. So there are many qualities that there are many things that you need for that. But little by little, little by little, whatever comes to your mind, whatever you see, hear, smell, and practice it yourself. And in the, in the, if you have kind of like a very good friends around you. And you can have a very open, clear conversation, but it is very rare. It is not easy for us, even though we think that we can have a very open conversation. Um, as ordinary people, we are not doing that most of the time. Most of the time we say things to make uh, kind of, we, we, we try to head massage people. But we say, we try to make everybody nice. We, we try to make everything good when we have conversation. It is very rare that we can have a kind of like a very deep, very clear conversation. But if you have somebody like that, and in that way also, it helps for you to kind of like a, refine yourself regarding that uh, whatever you understand. And other thing is to start to listen. Keep listening, listening, listening. Uh, reading also important. So start to read and keep listening. Then uh, wo keep watching many, many that the talks or the audio books lectures 
because in in by the time you are capable to gain the the something that valuable for you and you you will find something help for you to change but always you have to remember when you listening or when you hearing or when you reading it's not because of, we always like to judge the outside no le you not need to even judge yourself you can't do that don't do it apply it to you apply it to you whatever you hear uh, whatever the new things that is bring it through you let the let, keep that old things don't try to fight with that because you sometimes we can't change it but the, bring the new things circulate that and then by the time you will see whatever the perception come to you and you are more matured with that and any more kind of like not uh, emotional barriers or maybe not a kind of like uh, your past experience come and block it so not your mental formations hold it so that clarity will open you to different dimension around you so that is a kind of like a, that the success you gain using this conventional environment to experience something more higher and that experience little by little little by little uplift you and then by the time you will come to the very pinnacle of that wisdom which we call the liberation or the nibban so one should have that mission complete so with that let's get into practice a little bit now your right palm on your left neck head straight in one line and be comfortable with your posture so bring your attention to your body and scan head to toes to yourself and say supativa o oh, me i be well and happy three times take a moment and think we gathered here in this moment to practice this ancient meditation technique all the buddhas all the enlightened masters followed this path and achieved wisdom so we also gathered here to accumulate that knowledge in this moment with this sitting may my body become more comfortable may my breath be more smooth may no difficulties come to me may all the success come to me also think for a moment this is the last moment we're spending in this very lifetime and detach your mind from all your past memories and as well as any kind of future thoughts just try to remain in the present moment observing the sensation of your inhalation and exhalation so when you observe bring your awareness and little by little go deeper with your experience do nothing extra so in the beginning deep and gently breathe in breathe out three times and allow your inhalation exhalation happen itself naturally so don't think about it don't try to do whatever you want just allow it to happen as it is bring your attention to your body please observe your posture
We cultivate loving kindness and compassion in our heart and radiate it as a light through entire your compound, village, city, state, country, world, around this universe. Also as far as you can through galaxies, other planets, stars. Reminding yourself like this. With clear intention, mentally, repeat after me. May all living beings in this universe be well and happy. May everyone be happy and safe. And may their hearts be filled with joy. May all living beings live in security and in peace. Being so are pretty low, strong, tall or short, big or small, visible or not visible, near or far away, already born or yet to be born. May all of them dwell in perfect tranquility. Let no one do harm to anyone. Let no one put the life of anyone in danger. Let no one out of anger or ill will wish anyone any harm. Expand the loving kindness and compassion beginning from your heart. Forward. Visualize yourself and send it as a light. To your backside. Into your left side. And to your right side. Downward. And upward. To all six directions at once. Like the moon, the sun. Spread the light, spread the energy. Without any condition, without any limitation. Without any resistance or without any judgment. Let your heart to shine with the loving kindness and compassion from the bottom of it with the maximum effort to the highest. Wishing yourself, may all living beings in this universe be well and happy.
Say sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. So first of all, we offer this practice to the great qualities of the Buddha, Dhamma and the Sangha. Also by the power of this meritorious deed, may all of us attain to the supreme bliss of Nibbana. May all your guardian angels and deities will receive these merits and increase their longevity and protect all of you from any kind of planetary influences or any ill effects. Ittavata cha ammi sampadam punya sampadam sabbe deva numodam tu sabba sampati siddhya sabbe bhuta numodam tu sabba sampati siddhya sabbe satta numodam tu sabba sampati siddhya Imaya dhamma nu dhamma patipati a buddham pujemi dhammam pujemi sangam pujemi Addaya imaya patipati a jati jaravya dimaranam ha paribundi sami Idam me punya kamanga savakaya vahang ho tu sabadukka pamunchatu. Bless you.